Cardinals or something like that again, we will have to kick Ben into gear if he is awake at this point. <laughs> so let's see. And we're going to go ahead and do Twilight Fortress. And it looks like Select is remaining blue. So my colors are still correct. That's good. Oh, and if you guys don't know who we are, I'm Josh Suth or Ask Joshy on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube.com. That's YouTube.com slash Ask Joshy. That's where you can see all of my stuff after the PS, uh, PTSL wraps up here today. And with me is... Is Cats Pajamas. Hope you guys have enjoyed my commentary. Uh, my main point of contact and where I appreciate most of my follows is Twitter.com slash Cats Pajamas SC2. So you can also find me on YouTube, Facebook, and Justin TV slash Cats Pajamas SC2 or wellplayed.org slash Cats Pajamas. So here we go. Countdown has begun. We are playing a Blizzard map this time. This is Twilight Fortress. And I would love if randomly, like, a bunch of drones just spawned for Select <laughs> here. Instead of SCVs. For, for no drones. reason. He has 5,000 minerals to use instead of 50. <laughs> <laughs> so down here at the bottom left-hand corner of Twilight Fortress, we have, from Sup Suns, Dignitas Select. He is spawning as our blue Terran player. His teammate here from FXO is Optic Zero. He is our pink Protoss player in the top right-hand corner. We have EG's Axlov. He is our red Terran player, and also his teammate from Evil Geniuses is Strife Crow. That is our yellow Zerg player, although uh, the colors on this map very washed out and relatively difficult to tell that he is, in fact, yellow. And there was a little bit of chatter there. I'm surprised that Optic Zero and Select didn't realize that it was best of five already. Or maybe they're trying to rub it in to <laughs> Axelot and Strife Crow <laughs> and be like, hey, you only got one game left, sirs. And uh, Optic Zero already going off to do some scouting. He dropped the pylon. Uh, at that ramp, or I might have guessed that he was going over to drop some proxy gateways. That mm -hmm. probe scout is just so quick there. Uh, perhaps checking for a 6-pool or 7-pool, That would, this map would just be kind of ridiculous to do it on since it's the biggest map from the original Blizzard map pool. It's the biggest map before Terminus and Taldorim Altar and all those things got created for the GSL. So this is a map that Select and Optic Zero yesterday were kind of hoping that they would get. Uh, the couple of maps like Deconstructed, which we just couldn't actually make a second ago. Um, those maps have the spawn points so far apart between teammates that the Terran Protoss combination just wasn't uh, looking so hot. So uh, Select and Optic Zero definitely appreciating this shared base, shared ramp sort of style of map. Yep, absolutely. And this is going to play well into what Dignitas Select and FXO Optic Zero's main plan was. We're probably going to see some sort of a uh, quick waller and expand. It looks like we're just saving up for a 15 Nexus here. Unless Optic Zero decides to put down something, he is going to put down a Forge on 15 and then save up the requisite number of resources for this next base, unless he's going to bury a probe up here and do some sort of a cannon rush. She would have the possibility of uh, taking out this hatchery from Strife Crow, and I believe we saw this yesterday, yeah. actually, where he did, in fact, wall this off with a couple of pylons. Bam! There we go. There's pylon number one. Yeah, Strife Crow see it. Go ahead and take this Hatch's vision. Let's go ahead and take a look. Wait, hold on, that's Drive Grow. There hatcheries, we go. Yeah, hatcheries have no vision until they're actually complete. They have like a one range instead of that six or seven that they get after they're spawned. And obviously creep uh, helps well. Creep doesn't provide vision, but you can see all the creep from a hatchery. Anyway, two cannons being dropped right now. Drive Crow is not aware of it. He does not have an overlord there. And until that hatch pops, he won't realize that this is happening. He doesn't have any Zerglings in production. Now he's got two, but that's pretty much standard timing anyway. So uh, this first queen, not quite done yet. He's transferring drones like it's the most normal thing in the world. The hatch should be seeing all that. Yeah, he does pull those away before the cannon's complete, so he did see them. And now this hatch is basically forfeit. I believe that cannon will be in range of the hatchery. Yep. Yes, it is. And he's just, uh, he's actually putting up a couple of spine crawlers here, which is interesting. He's, he is going to try, he's not going to be able to defend. I mean, the, the hatchery is going to go down. It would be uh, you know, it would be a miracle to be able to save this because the cannons will just focus down the hatchery. Uh, we do have a few Zerglings being brought over, though. Maybe with the Zerglings, Marines, and the rest couple of spine crawlers, he's looking to go ahead and try and take this out. I don't know why, though, because he is going to get focused down so quick and it's just going to be extra resources lost and he doesn't really oh no here he goes he's going to go for it bringing in all of his zerglings going to try and poke away at those cannons oh he actually can get away to the left 
uh, didn't realize that there was a little gap back there, and so I guess he is going to save it. That did come with the loss of quite a few kills. Look at that photon cannon. Eight kills on it. It's going to get itself a queen as well. Nice. So the damage already done there. Wow. I was a little bit surprised that he didn't just, um, I mean, it was on Optic Zero to control his targets, obviously, and I was a little bit surprised he didn't just try to finish off the hatchery, but getting eight or nine kills with a cannon is definitely nothing to sneeze at, especially getting a queen kill worth 150 minerals and a decent amount of time. Uh, up, this basically bought Select enough time to build a starport with a tech lab just south of Axelaz and Natural, which is building, and Select is going for the cloak this time around, something we haven't seen yet in this series. Yep, absolutely, and Select is doing a really nice job with his control. He's picking off as many Zerglings as he can. He is going to get a few kills there as all of those units uh, do go ahead and line themselves up. Painful, painful, painful. Here come, here comes Banshee number one, though. Let's take a look at the... Oh, there is an Engineering Bay up, but unfortunately we do not have any sort of a missile turret. Ah, there's a Viking, so it's at least going to be able to put a stop to a lot. Oh, it's going to sneak right by the Banshee. Oh, no. No, he is going to see the starport, though, uh, so he'll know something is in progress. This Banshee, oh no, it's hidden off to the right-hand side. That Viking might catch up to it. Is he going to attack the tech lab? If he landed and tried to kill off that tech lab before Cloak finished, that would have been something, but Axelab instead just parking over the top of it, letting everything finish. I don't know that the Viking would have been able to finish the tech lab, but at least there would have been a chance to deny that Cloak. And now this turret building here, another Viking is out, but Cloak is finished, so that can just... Yep, turn blue basically, wait for the scan, the Viking might get enough shots off, I actually doubt it though. Uh, the Banshee just scoots on out of scan range. He is going to probably pop that SUV building, the turret, and now he'll need another scan, which he just oh, he just was able to afford, and now a second Viking coming in as well, helping finish off that first Banshee. But now, the cloak and dance, <laughs> the cloak dance begins against those two Vikings, Select just picking up his starport and leaving. Uh, there's still a Banshee in Axelab's base. He can find the sweet spots out of turret range, but probably not out of detection range. Well, actually, he seems to be in between both right now with that little sweet spot. He's doing pretty well. Do we have any support crawlers coming down for Strive Crow? No, we don't actually. He couldn't move his... Ah, but there is an Overseer. Okay, that's going to be plenty enough. Banshee goes away, and Select is going to have to run his way out of there. Strike Crow immediately going up to a third base as well. Take a look at the units tab, and for... Well, actually, both players are uh, exactly even on supply. Optic Zero has only drones right now. His army value was zero. <laughs> wow. 40. 40. And he's building five gateways at once now. He already has Twilight Council, a uh, Cybernex Core Researching Warp Gate, and a Forge Researching Plus One at this time. So he's just going to be warping in six Blink Stalkers at a time, which at nine minutes into the game, that's pretty good. Yeah, interesting swap away from the Phoenix Void Race order combination. So, like, parked his starport again just to, uh, I don't know the exactly. The, yeah. the Vikings were firing on it. Well, so. but now it's uh, there's really no chance of saving this and, unless he had some anti-air. So uh, he's going to continue this dance, but really it's kind of a waste of APM, in my opinion. I don't know. What is it? <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> Select is so interesting. Anyway, okay, that's really not all that important, though. He's he's going to lose that starport eventually. So, Strife Crow is transferring some drones over to the gold base here. He's got okay, i got to look at this again. Okay, that's not actually being killed. Here we go. There's a couple of... Ah, uh, that's a good decision. <laughs> he's <laughs> making the circlings just fly around. Once it gets on fire, though, yeah. it's inevitable. Yeah. Starport is on fire, as a matter of fact. And it looks like Optic Zero was sending out a few stalkers Changeling. to go ahead and deal with this. <laughs> Not killing the changelings, though, which is kind of cool. I think those changelings were like, wow, we're, we're actually still alive. Um, and he is going to attempt to save this base. Oh, wow, manages to pick off a um, two Vikings. And he did equalize the loss of that starport, believe it or not. So kind of interesting little maneuver there. And it does work out for Select and Optic Zero. Yes, yeah, Select still spamming tanks and marines. That is basically what he did every game after the Changeling just chilling in Optic Zero's natural right now. He's going to see that actually very close to that Dark Shrine. He might actually be able to see it with that Changeling if he just walks around a little bit more. Instead, he's content to just sit in the mineral line. But uh, either way... <laughs> Uh, That's hysterical. <laughs> it just looks funny. But uh, how many mutas? Whoa, where did those mutas come from? Spire Dicky completed a moment ago. First, star, uh, first and second Stargate both coming along now. Strife Crow does have a flock of mutas, and I don't really know of any anti-air that these guys have aside from these few marines and 
the Blink Stalkers, which are actually in the middle of the map. Oh, good turret placement. I actually didn't realize he had some turrets down already. I do see another one in the production tab for select. Those two Stargates will be done sooner than later. Dark Shrine also going to allow Optic Zero to show off his multitasking abilities. He can just send one or two DTs oh, to wow. each of these bases and have a field day. There are turrets up in Axelab spaces, but still no Spore Crawlers, really, for a Strife Crow. Nope, none at all, and that's going to be pretty devastating because DTs are going to put a quick end to uh, quite a lot of things. I love how changelings on the map still show up as the color of the uh, player they're actually emulating. It always confuses me, so I'm like, what is Optics you're doing with a unit here? Oh, no, that's a changeling. That's stupid. Oh, it's got to show up like that for the players themselves, too. Yes. And let's see here. And Oh, that changeling doesn't <laughs> get him. <laughs> changeling does go down. Select has a pretty significant force ready. There are a lot of mutas in this group, though. They can't fly over these marines, although the marines don't have stim yet. Well, the banshees are, are not the banshees, excuse me. The blink stalkers are right there Those, as well. Yep, they were lagging behind there for a little bit, but they have caught up now. Optics are going to be able to push in with a pretty good size attack. And what is Strife Crow bringing out in addition to this? Looks like just more mutas. Pew, pew. Those lasers pop another two overlords. Striper is actually supply block now and another free muta kill. This gold base really doesn't have much chance to survive. I don't know what Axel has been building or where his units are, but they're not in the right place at the moment. Uh, lots of siege tanks up on the top of this cliff. Select, of course, can just drop the Marines on top of the siege tanks, force them to splash each other. That's always a lovely tactic picked up from Brood War. Those zealot drops back in the day would cause siege tanks to blast each other into oblivion, but Striper going to lose this hatch. No problem. He's got 14 links and six mutas in production, but Optic Zero is in the base now, I believe, of Strife Crow, killing things with those Blink Stalkers and uh, down a little bit. There you go. And he's just uh, having a field day while all those mutalisks are playing over at Select's Natural. Yeah, and this natural is probably going to fall, but there's enough units here that Select and Optic Zero are going to be able to hold. Oh, repair. Oh, wow. And look Slight. at all those Stimmerines. So many mutalisks just fall. And that is not where you want to be at all if you are Strife Crow. Because Strife Crow is about to lose his main as well. There's a few units coming in. At the very least, he's going to lose a ton of economy. He is on 77 supply. 33 of that is drones and rapidly falling. Just a couple of units sitting over here. Optic Zero is getting in with a good number of forces. He did get in with those DTs as well. And I think they're actually going to survive the scan. Oh, no. They do survive the scan. Oh, yes. <laughs> they do survive the scan. So... Um, Optic Zero just having fun, blinking around, killing whatever's in front of him. There are a lot of mutalists cleaning up the last little remnants of Select's army inside of Strife Crow's base, but Optic Zero still with a lot of stalkers. This tank is going to get focused down pretty quickly. SCV is getting pulled off the line. Obviously, that's something you never want to have to do. Uh, that Zella just charged in place. That was kind of amusing to watch there, but now uh, these mutas are going to come in, sweep up all the rest of Optic Zero's units. There's another little string of units coming in. Oh, they're all charge lots. Didn't see a DT in that mixture either, so uh, Zella it's obviously not too good against a flock of mutalisks and tanks. Well, they are good against tanks in some capacity, but not in that situation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, Selecti is now running in with a bunch of Thors. Thor is here! And let's see, they have 128 93 supply, so uh, 221 supply versus 112. That's a huge advantage now for Sup Suns. Sup Suns is also up by, let's see, 111 to 50 workers, 61 workers altogether, so they'll be able to reproduce their army much faster. There's the stim out of Select. He's going to make his way up. They got all of these Hellions Thanks pretty quickly. And Axlov, he's not going to be able to do near enough damage. The rest of the tanks are going to go down, and all of these mutas are magic boxing, but. That alone is not going Archon. to be enough. They're going to have to run away. A lone Archon enters the fray. <laughs> but he's among friends with the Marines and the Thors. Uh, they're just going to charge right up into Strife Crow because he does not have uh, any economy left, really. They're just going to try and put the nail in the coffin in Strife Crow and Axelab. Most likely not going to be able to fight his way back 1v2. Uh, so Strife Crow is now supply block. He doesn't have really any mining going on. And these Thors, actually, they're just chilling. They're not. Even, they're like, all right, you zealots can handle this. And you <laughs> lone Archon, Queen, and drones all getting put into a corner and slowly <laughs> disassembled oh. by these zealots. That's just sad to watch. They're not even defending themselves. They're just putting on blindfolds and saying ended quick, but <laughs> Strife Crow losing that, uh, was it a hive already? Yes. Uh, yeah, that hive goes down. It looks like a little bit of a counterattack, but even, wow, Phoenixes and Cannons alone are going to be able to fend off all these remaining mutalists. Select still has a big blue remnant inside of Axelab's natural. There's the GG from Team EG. EG will be eliminated, I believe, as a $150 prize. That is correct. For third place, and, you know, they only had to win one series. 
<laughs> they did because they they <laughs> won the first series and then there was a forfeit uh, in the second series by Team Destiny that allowed them to move into the winners bracket finals from there on out they were guaranteed one hundred fifty dollars in prize money. Not bad day of StarCraft. Yeah, lucky lucky brackets. Perhaps uh, Destiny overslept a little bit yesterday, but uh, <laughs> just handed them one hundred fifty bucks. So Optic Zero and Select played their hearts out there on that one. They just rolled right over uh, Team EG. But unfortunately, Axelab and Strifecrow will exit unceremoniously, losing.